Hi there folks, it's Golgon1 for all, back for another Transformers review, and before I can go ahead and start the video altogether, I uh, just want to quickly just say something. I have moved into a new room, I've got more space, and this is where I'm going to be doing my videos from now on, because new room, more space, more room to move around, and more stuff, so that's pretty good. Uh, I won't go too much into detail about what room this used to be, but that's for another day. But anyway, yes, I've moved rooms, and that's why I haven't been doing any videos recently. Um... So there you go. But anyway, yes, back for another Transformers review, and reviewing one of the things, one of the purchases I got from Auto Assembly, and of course, it's one of the Hunt for the Decepticons figures that I said I was going to um, review. Um, and this is interesting because this is, of course, a character that everyone knows and loves, but it's a... Uh, I'm not sure if you can say it's the same character, but a lot of people say that it is, a lot of people say that it isn't. I, I think it's just an upgraded version of the G1 character that we all know. Anyway, yeah, so today we're going to be taking a look at Hunt for the Decepticons Sea Spray. This toy really is fantastic. I've looked at this toy for a while, and it really, really is a beaut. Um, but we'll get on to the toy in a minute, because the toy is the least of my importance. Um, we're talking, of course, about the bio, and the bio about this character is... There already is a bio for this particular version of this character, but there's, very, there's not very much to that bio that makes this character interesting. Well, it's just a bunch of stuff that has this character doing a little involvement in the series, but... And plus, to me, I think this is a much more upgraded version of the G1 Autobot that, that we all know. Um, now, Sea Sprint as a character, really, I can't really say much except for the fact that <coughs> he's a sailor. And that really all, that's really all you can say about him, is that he's a sailor, and his whole role in Transformers is that he enjoys the Earth. He feels more home at Earth than any of the, than any of the Autobots do. And... He enjoys exploring the Earth's vast oceans and exploring as much as the as much as the terrain as possible. And he loves the thrill of naval battles, despite the risks involved. And he hates having to assume his robot form on land. So you get the feeling he more feels comfortable on sea than he does on on the land, which is which is understandable, I guess, because he's an aquatic transformer. We don't really, we don't really see that many of them, but there they go. And his, um, Sea Spray's whole character distinction is that he has a very unique way of talking, and that in the show he was voiced by Alan Oppenheimer, and his whole way of talking is that he sounds like he's gurgling water, or he's got a mouthful of seaweed, and to this day I have no idea how that sound effect was ever done for the, for the, this character's voice, because the best I can do for this character is trying to give you an imitation of what, this, of what he sounds like in, um, in the show, and it sounds something like this. I don't know what I mean, right? I'm not sure what I'm saying. Yeah, um, doing this for a very long period of time and just speaking as hard as it looks. But I guess that's how it sounded in the show, but I would have loved to know how he did the how Alan Oppenheim did the voice, though. In the show, sadly, he didn't really get a lot of development in that he was one of those characters that showed up out of nowhere in Dinobot Island Part 2, and then in the Golden Lagoon, he was seen helping Perceptor and Beachcomber on a geological survey near the coast, and... In one episode, which is by far infamous for being, for making G1 what it is, a silly but enjoyable show, is the episode Sea Change, where Sea Spray and Bumblebee go uh, receive a distress uh, a distress call from another planet that is under control from a Decepticon or a Deceptitran. It's a planet populated by mermaids, and Sea Spray falls in love with one of the mermaids called Alana, and it's weird because. You see a robot fall in love with a mermaid, or I'm, I'm not sure how the opposite sex works in Transformers, but then again, it's, it's a different thing altogether. But um, thanks to the well of transformation with the use of the mermaids, um, the, I think they're called the Talacans in the episode, um, Sea Spray and Alana both assume different forms. Alana assumes a robot form. Sea Spray takes the form of what looks like Fabio. If you don't know who Fabio is, go look him up. But um, yeah, he's got the. Um, the Bronzed, oily pecs, the mohawk of blonde flowing hair. It's a weird episode. It's... I, I think you'll probably want to be put in a mental home after you watch the episode. It's a very weird episode. But, um, after that, though, Sea Spray, after that, kind of really faded from the scene a little bit, because he was an A5 character. But Sea Spray's last appearance, his recorded appearance of the show, was in the episode Thief in the Night. And in the Marvel Comics, same character, but of course he was a member of Perceptor's Resistance Cell on Cybertron, this is during the Smelting Pool. And in during the Dreamwave comics, he was among one of the, he was among the Autobots working for Smokescreen and Tracks. 
in an insurgency group on Cybertron and helped with the rising and overthrowing of Shockwave alongside Optimus Prime's crew on the arc, uh, Optimus Prime on the arc. This is during um, uh, the Combaticons. And in IDW as well, he has, um, again, same character, he appears in Chaos Theory where he was present during the Battle of Sherman, Bri Sherman Bridge, and in Seacons in Flight and A Rude Awakening. And really that's all I can say about him is that Sea Spray is a sailor. He's a proud, well I wouldn't say he's a proud, but he's a character that enjoys fighting on the water, not so much on the land, which is the main reason why he takes the form of a hovercraft. But he's a fast, very um, explorative sailor that loves to explore the vast oceans of the planet Earth and just put um, put his skills on the water. That's really all the character is. So, with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the toy, because the toy is fantastic. This, of course, let's just zoom in closely, this toy is his Hunt for the Decepticons version, and, of course, being in the spirit of things, he, of course, is a hovercraft, and he's a very arm-to-the-teeth, very futuristic, very modern hovercraft. In the Originally, Sea Spray was a minibot. And the toy, I had the toy as a child, and I sold it, but it wasn't a good toy. But this one actually makes up for that in so many ways. This is how, this is how I think, in a lot of ways, the Hunt for the Decepticons line does a great job from being different from any of the lines in the current line in Transformers. In that this has a movie aesthetic, but a classics feel to it, and that's what makes it very interesting. And, um... The one thing I like about this figure as well is that it's, it's just gorgeous as well. The paintwork on this is quite nice. The plastic, <laughs> excuse me, is thick and well put together. This alt mode hides robot mode very well. And the good thing as well about this alt mode as well is that because this um, hovercraft is much more bigger than the minibot that this character represented, you can have little transformers fitting in the back. Such as Breacher. There you go. And that looks much better, I think. But, and of course, this toy has been used to make a different, um, ridiculous in colouring, such as this toy was used to make, um, Deep Dive and Shattered Glass Octopunch, and both those figures are really good, except for the fact that Octopunch is toy. Um, on the chest, he has tentacles, which looks like two ducks kissing. <laughs> um... Look at the toy and then see for yourself, because that's what it looks like. But anyway, yeah, this toy is really, really good. I love the paintwork and the detail editor. And of course, on the top, I'm not sure if you can see it because it's so bright, you can see on the top the Autobot symbol and of course C S P Ray. Right there. You can't see it because the camera's not that good when you autofocus, but and of course on the side it's the exact same thing. S C S P Ray. That is really, really good. So this alt mode is really fantastic as well, and from what I heard as well, was that um, Takara Tomi's release of this one particular figure has some more vivid colours in an attempt to match um, G1 C Spray's colour scheme, and it does a good job with that as well. Um, this one I think actually manages to make up for that in that the colours for this one are not that bad, and it's a nice update for the character, but I still think though that um, the G1 character, the G1 colours would have actually held a little bit. But anyway, yes, the alt mode, very nice, hides robot mode very well. You can't see any little bit of robot mode being revealed. And the and the toy is just fantastic. It's really, really good. Now, um, onto the transformation, because of course these figures are quite hard to transform. Um first I'm gonna do is just take off the guns, because they'll come in later on. And of course move these out of the way. The turbines. And the thing is, I completely forgot how to transform this figure, so... Okay. First thing I'm going to do is just move these out of the way, which are going to become his legs in the robot mode. And detach the arms. Talk about yourselves, don't worry. Not to say that the transformation isn't hard, because it is, but it's also very fun. This is one of those toys that does have a fun transformation, much like Hybro did. And the, the transformation for it being very complicated also has a good job of being quite fun to do. So, that is side. There we go. And just put that out of the way. Well, I'm doing this the wrong way again. Oh. <laughs> Silly. There we go. And just clip that down. Oh. Once we got, finally you just want to make sure the arms are disconnected as well. 
the will. There we go. The arms are so held, held together quite well that it, it makes a good, um, good adjustment for the articulation for this figure, which is quite nice. And, hang on, one of the turbines is in the way. And finally, here is Sea Spray in his robot mode. And when I said before that the original um, G1 C, uh, not Perceptor, C Spray, when I said that um, C Spray's G1 toy was kind of crap, and it is just a little bit because it was because it was very small and didn't really add a lot of detail to it. This makes up for it in that it does borrow a lot of good um, good references from the original toy for a lot of different things. But it updates that in a much more modernistic way. In that, I love the head sculpt for this as well. The head sculpt is what makes this figure work. And that the head sculpt has a very scuba dive, uh, scuba diver suit look to it, which looks quite nice. It has the breathing apparatus on the side of the mouth, which is quite good. Um, and the visor again, which is quite, which again is a very nice touch to the head as well. And of course, the head can rotate the four three sixty. Well, I can't actually rotate the 460, but it, oh, of course it has a neck joint so it can bob up and down like that and it can move from side to side. Um, the rest of the figure though is quite good in that the, the articulation is quite nice. The arms, because these turbines in the way won't rotate all the way, won't rotate the 460, but of course the elbows are what well, they are, they can bend quite nicely. The knees are bendable and this figure just looks fantastic. A much more updated, really, really nice version of this character that makes him quite good. And it, it just looks really fantastic. The one thing that I like as well is they added to this figure to make it much more um, akin to how a scuba diver would be. In the in the feet, there are little flippers right there, so of course he can paddle all the way through the ocean and just look really, really badass. And again, that is such a nice touch. I love how that looks. Really, really cool. And finally, of course, you have um, his missile launchers, which, of course, again, missile launchers, you know what to expect. The button's right here. You press the button, fires the missile. The missile's like this. is a blue plastic. What more can you say about missile launchers? They are what they are, I guess. And you can have these little guys inside the hands. And there you go. This is, this is a wonderful toy. Gorgeous. Detail is astounding. The paintwork is wonderful. Everything about this figure just works for me, I think. In a lot of different ways because it's nice to have an update of an old character that everyone hasn't seen in a while. And with him in the in one of the many poses you can have him in, this is Sea Spray just looking extremely awesome. And it just, again, like a really badass, modernized scuba diver or a whaler or a harpoon or whatever you want to call him. Um, arm to the teeth, and he just looks fantastic. Um, would I recommend this figure? Okay. Don't take my word for it. If you want to like this figure, you want to like this figure, go ahead. But if you like Sea Spray, if you love the character that much, and you want to understand the character a little bit more, I would recommend this figure quite, quite highly, in fact. In fact, I would recommend the Takar Tomy version much more than this one. The Takar Tomy version has the G1 color scheme, and it looks fantastic. I've seen some of the pictures. But this one, again, is still very, very good. So, anyway, there you go. This has been Sea Spray, a, one, a, a sadly somewhat underappreciated character in G1 that finally has a chance to shine in the modern day of Transformers. A sailor slash guy that looked like Fabio in Sea Change, and I don't know why I could breathe out, but yeah, this is just a fantastic toy, highly, highly recommended, the Takara Toby version does as well, but yeah, Sea Spray, the sailor, the explorer, the guy that's, had the talks he's got a mouthful of seaweed, blah, 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 blah. sorry, I don't know where that came from, and he just looks really fantastic, highly recommended toy. So anyway, this has been Hunt for the Decepticons. Sea Spray, a really fantastic figure, gorgeous, right down to the right down to the last detail. Now I'm Skullgun One Four Zero. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you all soon. Take care.